Uh, the social media and the bias against conservatives, the president is convinced of it. My next guest asked the president just that. Take a listen. We have to do something. I tell you, I have uh, many, many millions of followers on Twitter, and it's different than it used to be. Uh, things are happening. Names are taken off. People aren't getting through. You've heard the same complaints. And it seems to be if they're conservative, if they're Republicans, if they're in a certain group, uh, there's discrimination and big discrimination. I see it absolutely on Twitter and uh, Facebook, which I have also and others I see. All right. Uh, that, that comment generated the most reaction and coverage in the press. And this is the guy who started it, Daily Caller, White House correspondent, Sagar Injadi. I hope I pronounced that right. It's very good to have you. Thanks for having me, Neil. So the president seemed to hint at maybe we got to do something about this. The impression on Wall Street was uh, maybe the government does something. What, what, what was your take on it? Yeah, so I specifically asked the president about changing the way that social media companies are treated under something called the Communications and Decency Act. And that has something called Section 230. Now, social media companies and the Internet are not liable for the content that is posted on their platforms. This goes to what I asked the president about with respect to Congressman Devin Nunez's lawsuit, his $100 million or $250 million lawsuit against Twitter. Now, Senator Josh Hawley and a few other Republicans have proposed changing that exemption for social media companies to make them liable for that content. It would be a huge change to the way that these companies operate in terms of compliance with that act, and it would really change the way that these, these platforms work. A lot of conservatives say that a change to the act would force them to stop bias against conservatives and hold them accountable for the policies that they have in place to police content on their websites. You know, maybe you can answer this. And I didn't understand the, the, the riff that uh, CNN's Jim Acosta had about <laughs> your, your questioning, and he was citing the wrong question. What was going on there? Yeah, Jim Acosta uh, appeared to just get upset that I had the opportunity to ask a couple of questions to President Bolsonaro he, uh, or, and to President Trump. He implied that I had asked President Trump about socialism. I actually asked President Bolsonaro about how he would react if a socialist were to replace President Trump. His reply was he thought that uh, Donald Trump would win re-election. Broadly, there, there is sometimes an upset, well, uh, upset people with the mainstream press whenever uh, I get to ask a question to the president, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Yeah, and it generated a, a good deal of news uh, because obviously he was walking a Bolsonaro a fine line. You have to respect the will of the American people regardless, but his, was his own president. There was nothing soft about it. Yeah, I, I, again, you know, I, I guess he's just not, he's upset that I didn't ask them why they're both authoritarian or I didn't ask a question on the Mueller report so we could all hear the same answer uh, that we've all heard probably 10,000 times. But I thought that they generated quite a bit of news on, on court packing and, and on social media companies. As you said, it got quite a bit of attention on Wall Street and on Silicon Valley from what I heard. It most certainly did. Uh, Sagar, thank you very, very much. Very good having you on. Thanks for having me.